Years ago, when I first started astrophotography, the stars that we got out of our image were just basically like pixel blocks. These days, we can make our stars just look beautiful with all the high resolution cameras that we have and all the amazing processing techniques. But I think there's been a recent trend, and I am definitely guilty of this as well, as just shrinking those stars into nothingness because we don't want them to overwhelm our beautiful nebulas, galaxies, and other things. So what we're gonna do today is show you some things that I found from other creators that I like to use in my images and hopefully you can try some of these with yours. So I'm Chad, this is the Easy Aster Images channel. We're gonna mess around with some photons today. Now, the first thing we have to do before we put the stars back into our image is we gotta figure out how we are going to get our stars. So let's jump into Pix and Sights here and let's get this going. So we have our beautiful combined RGB image here and we really haven't done anything to it at all first because what we need to do is we need to do all the stretching and all that stuff and figure out what we wanna do with our stars. So right now you can see that there's been no blur exterminator or any of that stuff. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a correct only pass of blur exterminator so that way we can make the stars look better and we can click back and forth and see how much better that looks. Now what we gotta do is figure out what you want to do and how you want your stars. So I like kind of doing it in two different ways. Sky Story has done this and I really like the way that he does it. I am okay with the way that these stars look right now after just using the automated screen stretch. So what I wanna do is I want to capture these stars, but I might also want to maybe make another image that has smaller versions of them or larger versions of them. So the best thing you could do right now is just kind of clone your image and park that off to the side. And we're gonna use kind of a technique with just blur exterminator. So that way we don't have to worry about doing any crazy stretching with GHS or anything else. So Frank from SETI Astro calls it as fluffy stars. I've seen uh, Craig uh, from Utah Desert Remote call it his fluffy stars. And basically what you can do is just kind of take a little bit of the edge off. You can kind of boost the halos a little bit. It's kind of all up to you what you want. So these are settings that I kind of like that work with this image. And you can see we still have a lot of different sizes of stars, big ones, small ones, all that kind of stuff. Now, since we are going to want to use these stars, we're gonna need to do all of our pre-processing stuff on the image so we get the best stars possible. So we've already ran the blur exterminator that we wanted. Now we are gonna run noise exterminator at its full power. Then we're gonna do the complicated little task where we're gonna open the screen transfer function and the histogram transformation. And we are gonna transfer the settings that we have applied here down to the histogram transformation. And then we are gonna apply that to our image. That is gonna give us our stretch stars that we want. And now we're gonna run a star exterminator and we are gonna unscreen them because we are now stretched and we want the best possible stars. Again, we wanna generate the star image and I use large overlap, takes a little bit longer, but we have acceleration enabled and it's gonna allow us to get those stars out. So here are our stars. We'll go ahead and get rid of that original image that we don't need anymore. And if you look at the stars, I did do a linear fit, so the color is already pretty good. But if you want to, you can actually go into something like Curves Transformation and you can pull up a real-time preview. You can just pull down the green on the stars just slightly. And then if you want to at this time, you can just kind of boost the saturation up on them a little bit as well. So that way you're all done and ready to go with what we're gonna call our big and puffy stars. So we are gonna put, go ahead and take this and put it away and go back to the original image. And let's go ahead and get the stuff for our nebula. And we will also get a smaller version of stars just to have in case we want to do something a little bit later. So we will open up a blur exterminator again. We've already ran the correction on it, so we don't have to worry about that. We can see we've got nice round stars. 
But now what we're gonna do is we are gonna sharpen these and make these things way smaller. All right, that's all done. And you can see now we have our smaller stars. And by the way, if you like what we're doing here on the channel, we do have YouTube memberships with the link below. If you wanna add it to what we are doing here, we've got like six members now and really trying to get to 10. Would be great if you guys could join. Let's get back to the video. So now we've got our two different star plates. So let's go ahead and save that. So we've got our small stars and our big stars. And then what this is gonna do is it's gonna give us some flexibility when we add this stuff back in later on. We can make the smaller one smaller or bigger or back and forth, but we're gonna use some cool masking techniques. So make sure you hold on. For, uh, but first we gotta get this nebula ready to go. So it's still in a linear state. So we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna run some default noise exterminator on it to clean this thing up. And then what we're gonna do is have to stretch it. So we'll just use SETI's statistical stretch here and we will get this all stretched out. We're not gonna waste a whole lot of time on the nebula today because the stars is what we're gonna do. So I'm just gonna give a little bit of a curves boost to this as well and pull this down to about 0.22 I think would work out pretty good. All right, we got our image here. Of course, it looks a little blah. I mean, if we want to, we can just go in and we can kind of pretty everything up a little bit. A little bit room, I would say, to work with the histogram a little bit. So we can go ahead and maybe pull the darks back a little bit. And I don't wanna go any further in here and start pushing and messing things up. So I think we're good with that. So we'll just go ahead and leave that there. And then we can go into curves transformation, make sure that we are in RGB. So that way we are just gonna work on the affected area. And I wanna just kinda make sure that we don't darken any of this stuff or actually lighten any of the dark stuff back there. So, yeah, just be kind of gentle with it. There's a lot of brightness there in the core that we probably could have taken care of a little bit better. Kind of losing some color and all that fun stuff, but we're just doing a quick nebula process here. So we'll just give it a little bit of a color boost. And okay, we've got some decent stuff going on there. That is gonna be good enough for our example. Definitely, definitely could take a little bit more time doing that as well. So there is our image and let's see, we've got two star plates now that we can work with. What are we gonna do? Well, typically what people would do is just go ahead and combine this stuff right back in and then you would have your full image. But what we got is our fluffy stars and our big stars. So one of the big things that I like to do is what Steve from Entering Space does is we wanna make a mask and we basically what the mask is gonna do is it's gonna put a stronger star here in the outside area where there's not the nebulosity. And it's gonna kind of dim the stars that are inside of the nebula. And we're gonna use a process called ACDNR to do that. Now ACDNR is kind of a weird tool and the way it works is kind of clunky. So the first thing you need to do is you need to make a clone of this because it's gonna overwrite your image. So you can take one of your images here and let's just go ahead and set this and call this uh, OG for the original. And then we're gonna call this mask because we're gonna make a, a mask off of it. And then we are gonna start ACDNR. And now the way this works is we're gonna be on lightness and you're gonna wanna click this preview button here in order to make the mask. And then you gotta do the real time preview. And you can kind of manipulate this however you want to. So, you know, it's all up to you. For the YouTube's sake here, I'm gonna go a little bit aggressive on making the mask. And you wanna make sure you leave it just like this and click apply or you might have a problem, make sure you have your preview clicked here, because if not, you're gonna have a problem. And then we're gonna get off of that and we are gonna have our mask. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna blur it a little bit. I've got the mask blur from Bill Blanchin process over there. And what we're gonna do is just go ahead and overlay this as a mask. And you can see that is the area that is going to mask. 
And now we can bring up a script. We're gonna use the image blending script and this will give us even more fine control on what we wanna do. So we can add this stuff back in. So this is the OG image. So we wanna bring up OG and then our stars are image 60 stars, which it's already selected. And you should be able to see that we are basically just like, there's no stars coming in here at all. Like we'll go ahead and just execute this and you can take a look at what's going on here. So there is that, let's go ahead and remove the mask and there you go. So totally overblown and just added, you know, totally blocked out all the stars on the way that goes. And it just kind of brings everything else into there. But what we can also do now, since we have these stars is we can combine this blended image now with these stars and bring in all of these smaller muted stars into the middle and not the bigger one. It's kind of up to you. We can just go whatever you want to do here. I'm just trying to show, you know, the flexibility and the simplicity of what you can do here. So we'll go ahead and bring the script up again. And what we want is we want image blend and then the stars that we want, the clone stars, and now you can see we're going to actually get some stars inside of everything else. And, you know, I overblown the mask and everything for YouTube purposes, but obviously you can see the difference here. So we added in our small stars and our big stars into this image right here. You can see we've got a little bit of stars in the nebula. We've got our bigger stars out here. So we're getting this nice 3D tunneling effect of course, it would have looked a lot better if I would have worked a little harder on the Nebula Chad. But then we've got the first one that we did here, which just basically totally blocked everything out because we had that mask on there. And the sky's the limit. You can pretty much do whatever you want to do. That is for sure. We can just go ahead if we wanted to. And at this point, we could remove the mask. We still have our stars. So if we wanted to go ahead and add them back in properly, thinking, man, I don't really want to do the masking and all that kind of stuff. What you can do is just bring up the image blend as well. And let's go ahead and go back to our OG image. And then we can select our, either our clone stars or our big stars that we have here. And it's going to just put all those back in here and it's not going to mess with the image at all because we have not manipulated it. So here is our third image with all the stars brought in. And obviously this is could have again been better, but I hope I demonstrated just how much power you have when it comes to playing with your stars, making them bigger, making them smaller, adding them back in, boosting the color, do not shrink your stars to nothingness. Make them beautiful. You spent all that time capturing them. Make stars great again. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. We will talk to you later. Hit me up with any questions. Peace.